This is Off Planet Radio. Welcome once again to Off Planet Radio. I am Randy Moggins, and we are in the heart of the great lockdown. Probably this show tonight may help uh, at least piece together some of the mysteries around where we've been and how we got to where we are now. And I think, you know, in a lot of ways, we're all looking for threads in the unconscious to kind of guide us right now, um, talking to people all over the world right now and hearing incredible stories that um, everybody's in a state of perplexity. And to counter that, we have to stay grounded. We have to stay somewhat inside of ourselves, outside of our heads, please. I know this real well, don't overthink this and just be cool with wherever you're at. We're gonna kick it off. Emily's gonna introduce our guest. We are going to delve deep into synchro mysticism. All right, hi guys, and it's great to uh, be back and glad to be able to do. One thing that this uh, time out has provided us is Randy and I a chance to do shows together because we don't have competing <laughs> work it schedules and whatnot yeah. anymore. So, um, and we have a guest tonight that I think perfectly complements the style that Randy and I have developed together in talking about our own personal stories and connecting them to things that are going on in the outer world. And so um, I just became familiar with our guest uh, about a week and a half ago. I'd heard his name before but Steve was like I think you should have this guy come talk to you at Conspiracy Cocktail. I watched his video about rhythmic gymnastics he kind of won me over with that and there he was and we had an amazing conversation and I recognized aha he's sort of one of us and so um, our guest tonight uh, kind of broke onto the scene with uh, his descriptions of his inquiries into the mystery of where he found himself living and that was the Susquehanna uh, mystery and he from that point has sort of traced reality the same way he traced the stops down the river into the Chesapeake Bay. So here to tell us about the Susquehanna mystery and take that right up to what's actually going on today with uh, coronavirus, Bill Gates, nonsense at the supermarket, and uh, how those, uh, how all of these timelines, whoa, that was interesting, how all of these timelines are converging in a way that connects our inner worlds and our outer worlds, and he's going to tell us how to overcome that with imaginary potentiality. Michael Wan, welcome to Off Planet Radio. <laughs> Randy, Emily, thank you for having me here. Uh, everybody who is uh, joining us, thank you for joining us. I'm really excited for this conversation. Um, you know, I say this a lot, like time is meaningless timing is where it, where, where it counts. And so timing just means like when multiple things happen, like at the same time or like in a certain frequency and without a doubt, like undeniably we are experiencing without like any sort of like description, like there's something we are universally experiencing, which I don't think anyone's ever actually seen before. And so like that in itself is like, that's an interesting marker in time. And then you'd be like, well, what else is happening at the same time? Like, oh, because this is linked to it. So the fact that we're having this conversation, like not two months ago, not two months from now, not a year ago, but like, this is it. Like Randy and I live like what? Like uh, 25 miles from one another? About 30 miles. Like, About 30. Yeah, we're just like right down the yeah. river. So it's like, you know, how come we've never talked before? It's because the timing of this event is like, you know, it's self-evident. There's so much like fog of war that we, that we sometimes overlook the self-evident, which is right in our face, which is, oh yeah, we're having this conversation now. It's like everything's getting really, really freaky. Yeah. You know, it's interesting you bring up that it's, we've never seen this before. Something stirred my memory about a day or so ago, talking about the epidemic. And I flash back to, anybody see the movie, The Prince of Egypt, which was about the, the Exodus story? It came out years ago, it was animated. Okay, so the Exodus story is largely that there was a plague sent upon Egypt by 
God. And probably the same God we got now. Uh, the people of Egypt literally were locked down in their homes because they were afraid to go out because of this virus, which in this animated movie they convey as these vapors that travel through the night and kill all the children of Egypt. And that's the closest parallel that I could find of anything literary at all that indicates we've ever been anywhere close to where we're at right now, which was, you know, six, 7,000 years ago. Yeah, I, I think uh, that's a, that's a really, uh, a really interesting way to look at it too. And it's, it's on one hand, we're walking this life. Like you're like, okay, you know, this, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Like I'm still here. But when we take a step back and we realize like there's something very unusual about this moment in time. And if you have the awareness to have that, like if that thought like is like, oh yeah, that, they, they, that, that is kind of interesting. Like, well then you've passed the test. Like, okay, guess what? This is, that was it. Like, like, the only thing that matters is your life. You're like, you're, we're all reflecting the same weirdness right now. And because it's all this, like, this is an abstract stuff. This is like real, like, look at your life. Everything's changing. And the last time, the last time that something of this magnitude um, occurred, it like made like one of the biggest impressions of like, you know, the, the current story. Like this is a retelling of a big story. So what are you going to do during this time? Yeah, that awareness. that's interesting. And Randy, what you just said about this, I never saw that. Is it like a cartoon kind of movie you said, animated? It's a, I think it was Disney, Disney. or Pixar, yeah. maybe one of them, that did this animated version of the story of Moses leading the Israelites out of Egypt. And the plagues that came upon Egypt as a result of the fact that it was basically let my people go or else. Yeah. And the story that's relayed in the book of Exodus about how the children of Egypt were taken in a plague, the Pharaoh's son. I mean, there's this whole smackdown that occurs that is a prelude to the Exodus itself and the background story of that. And this is the animated version of it. Yeah, what you were saying about that there was these vapors that were coming to get people in the dead of night, right? What my mind just did that is, do you remember back a couple months ago, several months ago, there was these, oops, we're having some funny interference. Okay. There was these stories about how they had to stop the flavored vapes because China was putting something in them, right? There was some big thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember this? Yeah, so, I okay. So, I, Michael, I, like, I, you're not f f probably familiar with this aspect of my work, but I have this theory about sugar as programmable matter. And one of the parts of the series on that was about um, vaping. Right. And that va vaping was basically, um, you know, how they charge the vapes on the computer. A lot of people, they have like the blue, the, that link where they can be charged on a USB port. That basically people who are vaping were downloading a program and then they were blowing that reality into existence. And you could create a hive mind by people breathing the program that somebody else had breathed out. One of the things that's talked about with vaping is this a lot of people are, are have created this, uh, this like, um, popcorn lung from doing that, right? So I would be interested to know both for um, the, who's suffering from, the, from this or whatnot, what the correlation is to uh, either being a vapor or being around other people who vape, whether you are getting ill or not. And I'm wondering if this is completely some sort of program. I mean, we talk, you know, especially since we're talking about Bill Gates or whatnot, but if these vapors are coming to get you in the dead of night, think about how we've been exposed to these huge puffs of smoke, right? For a long time, the people who are both smoking them and the fact that they're blowing them, it's like chemtrails at ground level. And what you were just saying about the vapors coming to get you, right? And, and there's this connection with China. So that's what my mind did with it. But it's also interesting that story you told that about the, the slaves and, and coming out of Israel and, and the pharaohs and all that stuff. I feel like somebody told me a story about that, not that a couple, several months back, maybe almost a year ago. And there was a mention of Nebuchadnezzar. And right when the word Nebuchadnezzar was said, I was out. Almost like it was a... a um, Q word for my programming, 
right? And of course I have the funny heritage where I'm Jewish, but with a lot of Sumerian and Egyptian kind of qualities and, and, and whatnot, and even look like that. But that, so I started referring to it as Nebuchadnezzar programming, which is, you know, like a slave, a sort of a certain kind of slave program, right? They took the children so, from. Yeah, the Nebuchadnezzar thing's interesting because that actually has a whole context to it that goes into triggers in, in programming. Um, that's a later epoch. That's actually Nebuch Nebuchadnezzar comes in later when Israel falls um, the first time when they're conquered and invaded. This story here is about people who are coming gotcha, out okay. of slave labor bondage. Okay. And I think I'm not are, familiar with the Bible. So. I, you know, and I don't want to belabor this because I want to give Michael lots of room yeah, to yeah. talk here. But since we tossed this out and it was totally free flow, my sense is that there is a parallel here in terms of where we're at right now, in terms of the bondage that we've been under and the commands that have been issued forth by so many people, let my people go. And now it's a slam down. They've slammed down. So I'm looking for parallels in all of this that inform it because I want to give it hope. I want to give us hope. So that was just kind of my background. Maybe we're in an exodus. Well, I want to, I want to, um, I want to support this idea you're throwing out there about the parallel because you do realize that that story, it's a, um, it's, it's the, that's where the, the Passover ho holiday comes exactly. from. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And then that's the last supper. That's what, that's exactly. the, the last supper which Jesus had. So yep. this is the week of both yep. Passover and like, you know, Holy Week. So it's like when you're getting into like, um, when you're getting into working with like energy frequencies, like, you know, retelling stories and, and like what you were saying with the, the blowing out the smoke, like that's both a magical ritual, like, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm blowing this in reality, but then it's yeah. also like yeah, yeah. cutting edge nano freaking like yeah. technology, like, no, it actually goes in your brain and whatever the F it was, like, it's the same thing. It's like, whatever that is, and it's the reinforcement and you're absolutely right. So, and I've been, this, like, this week is, th this is it. Like, like, let's give you one more point of reference. One week, or God, one year ago was the 40th anniversary of Three Mile Island. Mm, yeah. Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So if you recall, two weeks after Three Mile Island, and Three Mile Island, when we're talking about as a resonator, this is on the oldest river on the planet, the Susquehanna and the Sequana. These two, these two planets resonate. I'm going to show you one way in which they do. So it's like Three Mile Island, TMI. Tiamat, you were talking all your, your mm -hmm. Sumerian, Tiamat is like TMI, that's, it's one yeah. of the same. And the story of the Three Mile Island, that was like, if you go and do your research on Three Mile Island, it's likely that didn't even happen. Like, it was just like, a, it, was, it was one of these major events that was not a real event. So that happened. 40 years ago was the anniversary of it. Um, and I covered this, I was following this because, you know, I live in the area also, and this is a big deal to me. So the day of that, there was like this puff of pink fume, which came out of like one of the exterm, uh, one of the plants, like right down the road from Three Mile Island, one of the, uh, uh, one of the, the trash plants that, that burns stuff. But that was a big deal. And then two weeks later was the burning of, of Notre Dame. So Notre oh. Dame is like the symbol of, of ISIS, undoubtedly like that's the history of the name of it sequana and susquehanna they have like 10 or, or 12 different like resonators and here's like the latest one and we see there's this connection of this like particular like of symbology of of a, of a goddess and there's a burning element like however you want to determine burning you know that's up to you this we're also in alignment with the 40th anniversary of the uh of the of the release or the opening of the of the um, Georgia Guidestones. Like mm. everything's lining up. So you know? I'm hearing you say 40 and I'm thinking 40th parallel. So you're, you're really weaving into this. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a big part of it. It's like, you know, that's, that's where I kind of, um, you know, you, you said this in the setup, Emily, like, you know, tying in, um, tying in the personal story to like the greater story. And, and, 
about five years ago, I started recognizing that in my own sort of like, you know, I've always had some degree of self-awareness. Like if you're listening to the show, you got some degree of self-awareness, you know, you got a blind spot. And about five years ago, like my life started getting weird. And then I started noticing this feedback loop. And that's what a lot of people go through. And that's really why I tell a lot of these personal stories is like, listen, start looking at your own life. You know, we're all wired this way. This is how we're all reflections of the same, you know, whether you want to call it sacred geometry or whatever it is, like you explain it, like, you know, this is how you can experience it firsthand. But um, this is, this is just, it's been getting there's been a quickening from my experience in seeing how all of this is lining up, like the personal experience and seeing what's happening. And yes, you know, 40 is a big thing for me. When I moved to the 40th parallel on the Susquehanna River, like I never knew what the Susquehanna River was until that happened. It was like, okay. And what I began to do and what I think I do right now is, and I think we all do this, is we recognize something which is happening at a, a greater level. You know, we are in existence within something. We're underneath the stars, whatever you want to call it, you know, but we can sense there's something else. And we see inside this in the dome. <laughs> I'm sorry, I said inside the dome. Yeah, 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 exactly. And we, and we can see outside of it through like we, the, the reflections or like, you know, whatever you want to call it, there's this thing that when you see it, you're beginning to see connections which don't quite make logical sense of being inside the dome. But if you free up, you're like, okay, I could, outside of the dome, I know it's connected. I don't really quite understand inside the dome how it is, but this is how I sense it. This is what synchromysticism is. This is what the, like, like being attuned and aware of synchronicity and how it can touch anything. If it's in the dome, it's, it's fair game. And if you're good, you're able to see like there's certain, there's certain formulas, there's certain frequencies that happen within the dome. And that's what I think is happening right now. There's something happening on the dome level. That's why everything is kind of like converging. And I agree with you when you talked about the, like there's a positive spin, but you have to understand it objectively before you can kind of get there. There's a greater, what you're saying I think is that there's a greater pattern in terms of how this plays out, the projection. This goes into, so let's ground this a little bit with what you've done in your research and in your writing. With these neuro pathways and how they map from the greater down to the, I guess you would say lesser, macro to micro, as you put it on your website. So, so we have, so we go back to this thing before I, I was talking about like being able to recognize um, your own experience as a reflection of a greater experience. And, you know, this is, there are lots of ways to slice and dice that. And so getting down to like nuts and bolts of being in body, of being like physical, like having a name and, you know, doing the normal human being dance is, you know, we've got these like neural pathways and that in itself is kind of like a, you know, that's a bit of an abstract. Like I've never seen one, like you're telling me what they are, but it makes sense. And it kind of bridges between like the physical, like it's in the brain, it's an actual connection, which happens in the brain, but it, it correlates to something like a behavior, a behavior set, particularly unconscious behaviors. And so we can, we can understand that. And it's easier to understand that because we are above that. We're looking within, you know, we're looking at the microcosm, the below. But there's also, if we can understand on the below, because our awareness is like, you know, it's always in the middle. There's always something bigger. There's always something smaller. It's a little bit trickier to get to what you are in, but you can kind of like feel your way around by looking at the, the, the micro level and, and reverse engineering, if you will, the larger. And when you get good at that, at that like you start to get into alignment, you know the language. And that's part of what, what the language is, what neural pathways happen on the on the individual level, there's something similar that happens on a greater level. And just like neural pathways 
are natural in terms of how our system works, the neural pathway can be, um, it can be placed on purpose. It can be done consciously or unconsciously, but neural pathways come and they're created. And a hypnotist is the best example. Like what a hypnotist does is he very, very, he very, very effectively places neural pathways in the brain and it anchors it and it creates new behaviors, or at least that is the hope. And so the same can be done on the greater level. And this is like one of the ways of what we're thinking about magic, um, that you can create these neural pathways. It's not exactly like the neural pathways we have in our head because it's bigger, but it's more similar than different. And we can begin to identify, you can't see a neural pathway in your head, but once you become aware that such a thing can exist, you can begin to go and see in your own behavior set, oh, I have a trigger, a symbol brought me into a response. And then you can realize the same thing happens on a macro level and it's grounded and there are anchors. And you know that's really what the Susquehanna mystery was, was me telling of one very, very big, very, very big, but one big, um, large scale neural pathway that was anchored into a river. And that's like, if you can get out of like, you know, thinking of like whatever the environment is, like we live somewhere and there are these big things of water and they connect stuff, whatever, the, whatever that may be. And you kind of got that in your brain too. You got like bigger like connections, which are, you know, older than, than other connections and they connect to more things or they have a greater significance. So it just kind of like, it makes logical sense, but we don't quite get that. Um, that's what the Susquehanna mystery, I was talking about that for years and I experienced that. But now we can go and, and kind of apply all of the things we learn to begin to, to understand how to navigate this situation. Like, you know, what is, what is seemingly um, part of like a, 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 a NLP, a, a Neuro Linguistic Wide Scale Programming, and then what is natural? I mean, in my personal opinion, this is how I see it. I see that there is a base reality. I got no idea what base reality is, but there's a base reality. And that's where we naturally live. That's where like the humans are. That's like the human being is meant to live there. And he's meant to experience life on earth in a certain way. And we can get into that. And that has been inverted and within our environment there's like i almost picture it like a sphere and that sphere is you know it's a it's a dream it's not quite a dream but it's more dreamlike and we're all participating in that and something's happening right now and we have a greater opportunity as individuals to um uh work with more consciousness with it like possibly like get out of the 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 i don't know all i'm saying is like you just no you just i know what you're i know what you're saying because you sort of articulated the same conundrum i think a lot of us have right now is we have the sense that somewhere in this in this architecture of our being is an escape plan. I'll use that term, but I'm using it loosely because I don't like it. It's just, so what, what's interesting about this is how we're talking about a river and we're talking about mapping a river and looking at the river as it moves and has its substance used as, it's a projection. It's some kind of projection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, when I first heard you with, you know, Greg Carlwood, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Goro Adashi, who did the mm -hmm. work Time River. And Goro, Goro doesn't do interviews, but he really began to articulate some very intense concepts, much like what you're doing, but I think they're very different perspectives and I don't want to conf I don't want to conflate them. It's just a, a convenient reference because we've talked about Goro Adashi before 
in some of our Patreon group conversations. So for our listeners, it's kind of a, a reference point. But you're hitting on something here about a mechanism that lets us draw something from inside of ourselves map to something that's external. And if that's not correct, correct me. Uh, I'm just grasping for a concept here. I can't quite get out. This is um, what, you, what Michael was just describing with this base, base, base self or natural self. I, I, I'm, I'm reading this great book right now called The Sacred Journey of the Peaceful Warrior, which is the follow-up. It's written by a guy named Dan Millman, mm -hmm. who was a gymnast, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah, so yeah. the more synchronicities. He grew up in California, and he actually lived for a long time in the same area that I live in. And he was famous for a book he wrote called The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. It was exactly. made into a movie as well. This mm -hmm. is the follow-up book. And in it, he is... You know, I haven't finished the book yet, and at some point we will. I will probably talk in greater length about the book because it feels meaningful that I'm reading it during this time. But just in a chapter that we were reading the last couple of days, this shaman is explaining to him that there's three selves. There's the basic self, which is like the child self that is that is the real self that has certain needs, right, and is primal, right? Like the the, the needs that it has and are real, and those need to be tended to, otherwise um, distortion occurs. And then we have this computer or robot self, which is the one that de develops behaviors as we go out into the world and start to figure out how our behavior el elicits certain responses. And we start to not pay attention to the needs of the basic self as we contort ourselves into this robot computer self. Both of these, so it's kind of like the base level, the basic self is the base level. And then we have this dome that we're talking about and the computer robot self is kind of like the inner lining on the top of the dome or what, what is up here. And then outside of the dome is what she ter the shaman terms the higher self, right? That sort of oversees both of these things. And once you've learned how to um, control the robot computer self by responding to the needs of the basic self, then you have access to the higher self for guidance. Right, and sort of what you were talking about, and then sort of what Randy started to bring in, reminded me of that. Like, is this is that kind of what you're saying, Michael? Like that that was sort of. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Um, what I was saying, I was saying a bunch. It's so complex right now. So many yeah. things are happening, and it's like it's very tempting to go down um, to go down uh, a, a a bunch of very, very, um, you know, uh, fun and interesting and accurate kind of dis uh, discussions and descriptions. And I think that's where I'm like, so much is going on. Yeah. Something's very, very great. I don't know if this is true, but this is what, what, what like jumps out in my mind as the marker that this is what really matters. Like, um, I don't know if you, you saw this, but they're putting back out the idea that, um, that uh, according to Stephen Hawking, so Stephen Hawking is the representative of whatever Stephen Hawking represents in like the, the mainstream mind. He actually said that 2012, uh, the end of the Mayan calendar wasn't 2012, but it was 2020. It was the, the summer solstice 2020, which is interesting because, um, you know, it's a, a, you know, there's an eclipse that's happening on the summer solstice 2020. There's all sorts of like interesting things going on. So, but like, that's an idea, which is like, whether that's a trigger or whether it's really happening, but it's like, no, this is when it's real, like something really, um, really kind of uh, um, significant is going on. And that's why all of these different sort of um, ways of interpretation, I think are, um, are valid because everything's in play there's something which is happening like maybe you know we re that that really is happening like whatever the mayan calendar was was like whatever level of reality because that was still just a level of reality um there's something which which is being uh which is being triggered with that right now yeah. but what what i'm really interested in is is um more so like this idea of where I say there's this sphere mm -hmm. because the sphere is not authentic. 
The sphere yeah. is like, that is like, whether you want to call it, that's your ritual magic. That's your, 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 your large scale social programming. That's your transhumanism. That's your, your cybernetics. That's like all of that sort of stuff. Um, and, and what's, what's happening within the sphere is it's set up like the movie inception explains it perfectly. It is the, uh, it's a multi-level dream. And what that means is when you wake up, you're actually waking up in another dream. And it's like, and so like, we're seeing a lot of that. And there is a potentiality that we are to stay within that sphere. Because there's a base level of reality, which we can live on earth, which, which, does, not, which does not necessarily exist within this, this sphere. And so let me, let me be very, very clear about this. The entire world is on lockdown right now, or at least that's what I'm being told by my computer box. But my computer box is the only reason why I really know this to be true. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, that's a dream. Like I have nothing in my real life. I mean, I kind of do, but I don't really, like I'm just getting a reflection back of what has already been implanted here. Like that's what I mean as a dream. Like this, maybe it's happening, maybe it's not really happening, but this thing that if this computer box wasn't around, maybe we wouldn't all be thinking the exact same sort of thing. So, so that's what I say, yeah. like kind of like the dream within the dream. And that's how it happens, like in real life. Like, and that is like, all of our social programming is another part of it. And like, and so what I think is significant right now is to be, and we're being afforded that, like what I'm seeing right now, and I'm very, very hesitant about like, about like really describing anything because it's so fluid, you know, it's so new, but it's like, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bark and there's no bite. There's a lot of coercion. And part of me is sensing like this is being managed at a higher spiritual level, which is like, I can't force you to do anything against your free will, but I can do everything in my power to make you choose to do this. And that's what I mean by bark and bite. And so- It's kind of a soft lockdown in that sense. Totally, yeah, totally. Yeah. And, and I, I don't know who saw this. And by the time this show comes out, I'll put a link up with this because things pass by so quick. David Icke did a two over two hour interview with London Real that came out yesterday. It got taken down from Vimeo and YouTube. And he goes into some of these concepts as well. The fact that really all this is, is the cult at the top of the pyramid right now has used deception and guile to convince us yeah. that they have the power to do this. Um, I mean, I posted some things on Facebook a few days ago about the lack of, of the, the wording of the proclamation made by the governor of Pennsylvania on the lockdown and the fact that he cites no legal authority to do this. There are no new laws. There's no legislation to back this. This is all being done by fiat. And it's being done as a soft lockdown, as a test run to see how compliant we are, among mm -hmm. other things in the sense yeah. that we're being tested and watched as we go through this. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, I, I'm just going to disagree with it. The, the, go ahead. The, that this is the test run. I'm saying this is the bit. <laughs> well, no, it is the thing, but I think there's levels <laughs> agree, to yeah. it. There's levels I mean, to undoubtedly, it. Undoubtedly, this isn't the end. No. This is just like the thing that's leading up to like whatever the next step is. Right, but like, exactly. This is, this is like, like uh, um, this, this is lockstep. And, but at the same time, it's just like what you're saying. It's like, um, and it's, it's like what you were saying also, Emily, the three selves, like it is speaking to a certain level, like a certain part of, of, of the individual, of the psyche. There's like, you know, if you go and you like break down everything which is happening, you can kind of go and see. And I mean, it, it's, it's quite evident what one of the pretty major game plans is like where everything is being driven. And like, I don't even want to talk about it. It's like, because, but it's, it's just like, yeah. it's like a, um, it's like a sales job. Like it's like, well, it's just assume this is what it's going to be. It's no different than like puffing your, 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 your vapor, your, your vape smoke. It's like, 
okay, well, I'm just going to duck my head from underneath it. And that's, you know, you said this in the very beginning, Emily, and this is what I was trying to loop back all along, is like, that is why I keep talking about imagination. And that's what imagination is for, is because when you are in this, this triple level dream, this quadruple level dream, and all you can do is say like, I don't know how deep it goes. And the entire system is set up to make me think that I've woken up, but I'm not really awake. Yeah. And so like, you always have to be kind of like, at like, you know, okay, at least that potential exists. So you have that. And because what the risk is, you're going to reflect back to what you want, what you're creating in your mind based upon something that was just programmed. Like, oh God, I wish I had my job back. Oh God, I wish that like, you know, like, you know, I could go back into my, whatever it is. It's like, so here's the thing. All of that's an inversion. How do you know that? Because how you know it's an inversion or not is from the most core level, from the very first seed, was it in harmony with expansion or was it in harmony with, with contraction? There's a place for contraction, but human beings are expansion beings. So it's like, that's how you know if what you want to be involved with. And that is outside mm -hmm. of the sphere. And so that being said, you're like, all right, well, all I know how to imagine in my mind is that what has been given to me through this multi-level dream. So I'm going to have to imagine it. What am I going to imagine? I'm just going to reverse. I'm going to reverse the, uh, um, the, the, the inversion. Because here's the thing, like you said this in the very beginning, Brandy, and like, uh, I'm not trying to sound like, you know, really like this is how it's got to be done, but I'm going to just, I'm just going to say it. This is, this is the truth. Like prove me wrong if I'm wrong, but every single person is going to come up against a line. And what the line is, am I going to walk away from all technology? Yeah. And here's the thing that does not mean that I am going back to what you have been programmed to imagine as a very, very kind of simplistic level of life. Everything that we can accomplish with this is an inversion of a truth. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Including the technology, which is including, a yeah, But the technology is in harmony. That is the truth. And so, like, that's the imagination. It's like, we can't see it yet. This is what, like, I, like, I try to do so much about objective truth. I'm like, objective, objective. But the truth of the matter is, like, there's something inside of me which drives me. And this is the ultimate thing, like, when I'm like, this is the first lie that has ever been told. And it's, the to it's this idea, and I don't know how far it goes back because time is meaningless. So th it is the first time it was told what is called the human being, that the human being is not 100% in control of their experience on this environment. The reason why we're separate from other, every being on this environment, our spines are perpendicular to the plane of the earth. No one else has that in their normal gait. It's because we experience it differently. We're the only ones who can make like bridges out of cement. Like, I'm not saying that's a good thing. I'm just saying like, we can do that. Like if you got all the raccoons together, raccoons are friggin' awesome. And no point will they make like cement factories to make cement and, and architects. Like, it's just not that. But, but we do something different. That's the fact. I'm not saying that's the way to do it. I'm just saying we have a capability. And what I think that is, is like we can have all of this in a way which is like we, as soon as we believe that we were not special, that we were not able to be self-sufficient. And this, I have not experienced this. I'll be the first one to say this. I haven't seen it with my own eyes. I just know that it is the ultimate fact. That as soon as you realize that you don't have to eat, that you eat because eating is a joy. Everything is like a joy. That's the reason why we're here. And we, at some point, been told that we need that. We need to move out of that. And this sounds so friggin' nuts, but it's the only true safety valve that you're talking about, Randy. And I think it's like, it's like what we're talking about, the gymnastics. How do you get there? Tiny step, tiny step. But the truth of the matter is, that's really what I think the environment on earth is like human beings were still meant to be human beings, but we weren't meant to think that we had any degree of scarcity. That's why there was no need to steal from anyone. There was no need to do anything because everyone knew like, Oh yeah, I'm completely contained within my own consciousness and understanding of yeah, how scarcity I am. is an invented concept. That's how you control a society. There and is no scarcity. 
we know that because nature itself is abundance. And that is it. And we have to, and that is the escape valve. Okay, so, well, there is a lot of stuff there. And, and I had a, a couple of things occur to me as you went through it and see if I can take them off. First of all, as you're talking about this sphere, Michael, I'm thinking of, have you, have, have you watched Westworld? It's in season three now. Have you seen this? I'm aware so, that it's out. Okay, so season three, in season three, we're introduced to this new visual and this new sort of technological altar, okay? Like maybe like a D-Wave computer, like some sort of altar, right? But it's a sphere and it's a technology called Insight that creates a mirror world that has used your behavior on technology to predict what your likely future will be and then they decide if you're worthwhile or not. Right. It's called the probable futures database, by the way. Yeah, right. It's right. So, okay. So in this, right, the, there's a character who has been written off by the system because of what this projection into the mirror world has seen what his future would be. So they've decided he's not worth spending resources on. Right. So he's kind of living on the fringes, but he, no, the humans in general, uh, the base the most of the humans don't know about this technology he's basically made aware of it by uh the ai that is trying to battle this right he's made aware of it and so then he has a choice to do something different than what his his um technological self which would be the one that lived inside the sphere that you're talking about right that that what that's projected or predicted to do and so it's the same moment you're talking about that we all have sort of this moment right now of deciding so there was that and then you got into then you said something what were we were just talking about just now oh you were, so we were talking about the inversion what was the last thing you just said before i started talking there was something else that was really oh i lost my train of thought what was it that you said right towards the end of that hmm i hate when that happens i don't I lost my oh like, i know like, i know perpendicular are that our spine is perpendicular to the earth Many years ago, I ended up down a rabbit hole and on some website called Sign of the Times, S-O-T-T. -T. And they were talking about something about some Cassiopeian thing. I couldn't figure it out, but they were talking about when the time came, right, when the shift had to be made, what you wanted to access was not a parallel reality. It was a perpendicular reality that existed. And when you were just talking about that we were different than everybody else because our spines are perpendicular to the earth as opposed to parallel or at an angle to it, it made me think of that. And that this, you know, we hear so much about parallel realities, but we don't hear about perpendicular realities. And for some reason, my mind just went there when you said that. And maybe our spine is sort of a gateway to this perpendicular reality that exists, right? That, it, when everybody's looking for parallel, like people are looking for portals right now, for sure, for escape valves, for mechanisms, and everyone's looking to parallel dimensions, parallel realities. But maybe to what we're supposed to look at, right, is this spine that you talked about that is perpendicular to the earth. Uh, I would, I, I exactly. And it's and the thing is, it's like everyone's always had it. Like that's yeah. really designed with that. It's not like oh, let me in on the secret. It's like guess what? That's your nature. That, yeah. that like that really is like all of this <laughs> stuff isn't like mumbo jumbo like new agey like the human being. Like no, the human being is special. It's perpendicular, just as you said. And that has a there's no scarcity. You can go and do whatever you want. So, some MFers, they like created some spells and you believe in this stuff, which isn't true. And so it's like, you know, you're just, it's the Wizard of Oz. And like right now is like something strange, something out of the ordinary is happening. And like people have always recognized this to a greater degree for as long as there've been like the human story, whatever the human story is in this sphere. Like, you know, that's what all the story, that's what all of the, the spiritual truths are about is recognizing that there's something else, right? Yeah. That it's not the friggin' sphere, it's something else. Um, but never has everyone been like, all right, we're on the exact same place right now. Everyone's uncomfortable. Everyone has the same limitations. All of the things which people used to compete for don't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. 
And so it's like something very, very special is happening. And I think all of these things that we've known, it's like, okay, like little by little. And if we start looking at it, it's like, you know, when we start like really going into like the specific things that we're seeing, like I, I talk about a number, my house number and how it keeps yeah. like, but that's not, I'm just doing that. Like we all got that. That's how we're going to start perpendicularing our way out of it. And it's like, that just dissipates. You're aware of it, but it can dissipate. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about like right now, obviously we hear all this talk of like, there's going to be food shortages, right? Which like, like that's what they're scaring everybody with, with the economy. But like, there's no less apples on the tree right now, just because everybody's staying in their house and listening to what the box is telling you. Yeah. Right? Like I've always wondered like, well, if the economy collapsed, who cared? If everybody just kept doing what they, the things that they were doing that they knew were beneficial, right? Like no matter what happens with the economy or anything else, it never reduces the amount of water in the ocean or the amount of apples on the tree or, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's, that's the objective truth. Like when, when you go and you think about it, you're like, that is just the objective truth. That isn't like a spin by saying this is like a good thing or a bad thing. It's like, well, this is true. There's always this and always that. And that's how we, we navigate through it. Like this idea of just stating and realizing what the objective truth has been <laughs> taken from. Like it's been so minimalized. Like it's almost yeah. like, no, like, no, like that's it. So it's like, just trust that shit. Yeah. Because everything else is like Wizard of Oz. Yeah. It, 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 indeed it is. I can attest to everything is Wizard of Oz for sure. But it feels real, like, because, I mean, and that's part of it. Like, if you're going to listen to the food shortages stuff, like, mm -hmm. that's going to that's gonna scratch an itch. Like, that's part of all of this sort of thing. It's like, you're going to have a food. What are you going to do then? You can mouse feed, riots. How's your kung fu? Well, look, how, blah, blah, blah. look what happened when people thought they were going to run out of toilet paper. <laughs> You know, this is this is the mindset that we deal with in in a, in a culture that's consumer oriented and deals in the constraints of of lack, because every day you get up and you compete, and every day you get up and you have to restock the shelves, and we never think about the flow of the universe, which is abundant, which is energy, the flowing of energies. One of the things which I, which is just like, you know, it's, it's, there's a part of me which is so friggin' tickled by what's going on right now because I'm like, there's part of me which is like, yeah, I've been waiting for this for 20 years. Like, you yeah. know, I've, I've, you know, I think everyone, there's a, a lot of us are like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm, of course. And so I, I'm watching like mainstream stuff with like, like an excitement. You know, there's part of me which is, which is like finding the, the movie theater element of of this is is very exciting and um one of the stories which which they're they 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 keep putting out is um it's just like kind of like it's it's pulling me in and so when oh, I you froze for a second. Yeah, oh, the, there we the, are. You're back. You, you froze okay, for a second. Okay, okay, okay. You're okay. Um, I like your feather. Oh, you. Uh, well, this was part of what what um what what I. So all of this is is it's affecting us in all in 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 these different ways. And so as we watch the stuff on the TV, as our inner as you know, this is part of the the reason why the the technology, which I said earlier, is. It's becoming more important right now, but it's also becoming like, this is the parasite because this is parasitic in nature. And what we know the parasite does is it makes you want more of what the parasite needs. This is the sugar, mm -hmm. which you're talking about, the programmable matter. It's all of this sort of stuff. I'm seeing this with like what's coming from Amazon. Amazon is the next version of sugar. Like, you know, there's a programmable <laughs> matter somewhere which is getting you your stuff in 24 hours. Yeah. And so it's like, It's these feathers. It's like, that's what I found. So it's like, I'm walking out in the backyard. I was going to be in a place like three months ago that it would not have been where I would have liked to have been spending these last couple of weeks. And where I found myself through like no planning of my own has found me. 
And then what I'm recognizing is that as I'm spending more time on the computer and I'm spending more time than I've in a long time, it's really starting to affect me in ways which I'm not liking. And I think it's yeah. this parasitical thing. Yep. And it's like, that's why I'm holding this feather because I'm realizing just as strongly as I'm seeing the other message. Mm -hmm. And so that is, that's something I think we all need to probably recognize sooner than later because it's going to be pulled from us. And so if we can walk away from it first, mm -hmm. you know, all of those people in New York City who like, they're, they're not going to be able to smoke right now. And, you know, yeah, they should have stopped smoking a while ago, but it's like now it was pulled out from underneath them. And that's 10 times worse than if you would have quit two weeks ago. Oh, did they just pass a law in New York City? Well, they're threatened, to, they're threatened to do that. But ah. it's, this is the sort of thing. So it's like, I'm recognizing this with technology right now. And I'm like, you know, I'm seeing this real time, like as we, as we are, as you and I are speaking, like I can feel the effect of just like talking into this, this camera, um, mm -hmm. which I wasn't yeah. feeling a week ago. It's like the game, they've upped it. You know, they've upped it. And so it's like, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I mean, I, I agree with you. Like, what, one of the things that occurred to me, like, I, I remember having a conversation with a cousin of mine who's an interesting character at, at a family party one time and explaining to him that, like, one of the things we were going to have to be willing to do was, like, willing to walk away from the technology. It wasn't necessarily that we were going to actually have to walk away, but we had to be willing because, only, like, if, if you know, and, and maybe we've passed that point, and at this point we do have to walk away. But basically, the part of the reason that they're able to do all this crap, not creating clean technology, not creating, you know, because there's nothing wrong with technology in and of itself. Like the 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 kindest definition of technology, Sonia Barrett says this, and I love it, is knowledge of art, right? Like it's an artistic, elegant kind of thing. But they've created this crap, this like GMO version of what that could be. And if people aren't willing to use it, then there's not going to be a point in creating it, right? And so that willingness to say, no, I'm not using that. Right. I'm not right. doing that, right? And so I think that like either, either enough people become willing to walk away or those of us who don't want to live in the GMO society are going to have to walk away. Well, you know what I mean? It's going to be one or the other, yeah. What, what's going to happen is, is like, the, and this is the dream world. The dream world is like, oh, if you want your dream back, you want, you want this already sick thing, but you're addicted to the sickness. Well, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to come back and you're going to have to, you know, maybe get your certificate, maybe get your vaccine. Like, you know, they, they said that Bill Gates literally said this. He said, he said that we're going to go and we're going to build state of the art factories for, for seven, um, for seven potential vaccines. We're only going to make two of those vaccines, but then we're going to have these five other state-of-the-art of factories. It's like, you know, it should be very evident to anyone who would be watching this. They're like, okay, this isn't something I want to participate in. And it's like, there's no, like, there's no halfway. There's no halfway. You're either in that game or not. Like, it's like, we yeah. are far gone from that. And regarding the technology, and this is where I say like about the objective, truth, go back to the original. So if you've got a technology where there's no slave labor, you've got a technology where it is not, the extraction process is not out of harmony yeah. with the environment, well, then you've got like, you've got, uh, you've got a, a, an artistic form of it. That's what we are meant to do. Yeah, I agree. Like, and so, and it's that from every level, it's like, there can't be money involved with it, particularly debt-based. There's always going to be currency because there is a means of exchange, which is easy, but there's no such thing as scarcity. It's like, we can live in these cer certain ways. So it's like, you're absolutely right, but it's imperative to recognize how is, if there's any part of what you are wanting back, if it is still connected to something which is at the very fundamental level, slave labor, destruction of the environment, um, debt-based currency, anything. It's like, that's still, you're in the dream. Randy, this is taking me back to your second interview with David Martin, right? When he talked about the problem with all these people who are like, you know, do you know who David Martin is, Michael? No. He's, a, he's a, an integral economist, right? And basically he, like, he looks for real value, not fake created extracted value, like that kind of right. thing, right? And he, 
basically like Randy had him on uh, uh, during the period of time that was like around Occupy Wall Street, right? And he was talking about how the thing that all of these people at Occupy Wall Street are missing is they're there staging this protest, but they're on their computer like we are right now that is based on slave labor in Africa where these kids are paid two pennies a day to extract toxic chemicals out of the earth and you can't ever create a meaning, a movement for freedom that is using to fuel it the technology that is based on slave labor and extraction. Yeah. Remember that, Randy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that, that's always been the case. Um, yeah. I think right now, because of what's happening, it's like, it's like the, there's being a line drawn in the sand. It's like, you're not, there, you know, we'll, we'll go and see, but I think it's just all talk about any sort of fear mongering that you're going to be forced to take a vaccine. I agree. So what happens, you're going to get pressured into it. And you're going to be like, if you want to come back, you want to come back to the system. Well, then you're going to go and you're never, and that's just what you're choosing, whatever. Like, it's like, we're, we're in this, like, everything's going to be different one way or the other. But that seems to be where the magic is happening. And the, the escape system is the ability to then go and, and, consciously walk away with the expectation is like i'm just stepping off of like this but this perpendicular society this is already in play like this is how humans are meant to be i mean that's what the synchromysticism is it's pointing to a level which we can't quite see it's pointing to something else and that's what and this is where that leap of faith is coming I mean, that's the, that that is the truth it's like there comes a point like you're only going to know until you do it yeah, it's almost like that maybe that, that thing we can't see will become visible when we step away from that technology that is, that is somehow creating a vibration that is blinding us, right? We can't see a particular frequency band because we're so locked into another one. Yeah, yeah. Constricted bandwidth. I mean, basically the artificial technology has stunned and prevented us from developing the things that are inside of us, including some of our abilities, our senses, yeah. the way we communicate, we're reducing everything down to digits, binary code, hexadecimal, yeah, rather than the abstract codes, which <clears throat> are showing up in research that I'm doing on DNA right now. Fascinating in terms of the complexity and yet nature's ability to use what is effectively our own etheric system to communicate even with the universe. I mean, it's phenomenal. And so we're connected to another river and that river is actually extra dimensional as well. I mean, that, that, that makes sense. I mean, because everything is like, once you see it and understand it on one level, you can always expand it or, or, or reduce it. I mean, that's just the nature of, of where we are. Yeah, where we are. Where we are is we're coming down on the line here with the first hour for you folks. And uh, Michael, I want you to let people know a little bit about what you do. I'm familiar with some of the events you've held because I've, I've hoped to get to one of them. Because uh, I've actually followed your work since you were on Greg Carlwood. Um, you have books. You make these marvelous walking sticks. So tell people a little about, bit about what you do and how they can avail themselves of that. I was just going to ask him the same thing, Randy. Look at that. Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> there, 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 there's, there's three things I like to do. I like to make stuff. I like to tell stories. And, and I, like to, I like to get in deep inside people. I find people, uh, I love the human experience. And I love to understand, like, you know, what it is to be someone else, you know. And so I, I do all those things. Like, you know, I make things and I sell things and I make uh, some really nice stuff. The, 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 the walking stick. So it's not like, you know, a walking stick is not meant to be uh, something that assists you when right. um, you walk. That's called a cane. A walking stick is what you carry when you are out on a stroll. And so the, the, what I make are, 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 are very different that way. And I'll just kind of leave it at that. But you can find all the stuff which I make at Susquehanna Alchemy. That's where I also do, um, I call them starboard sessions or ceremonies. And I will go and I, I tell someone's, um, their natal story. I tell uh, their story of how they're connected to 
to the known macrocosm. And, you know, I like to tell stories and, and, and I make files and I send those to people. So you could do that. And then also you can find my work at Susquehanna or at subscribestar.com at Susquehanna Alchemy. And that's where I put out like the first of everything, which goes out on YouTube or Instagram. That could all be found Insta, uh, and, and, and Facebook, I suppose, on, with Susquehanna Alchemy. But Subscribe Star is like a place where you could go and, and get some more detailed things, some first things, and also a place where you could support me if you want to support this type of work. Cool. And we will put links up with a show that will point you in that direction. Emily, anything else we got to do on this side of it? I just want to uh, let people know if they would like to see the second half of this show, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash off planet media. We're going to move over to the other side with Michael, the patron side, where we're going to kind of talk about uh, the three of us are going to kind of mind meld about uh, our lives and the places that we grew up and, uh, sort through whether or not we're building a mystery or revealing one and doesn't matter which one it is so we will see you on the other side there you go this is off planet radio